Maybe you can go back and tell me how you three guys got together and came up with this crazy idea. A couple of years after all of us uh, were discharged from the military, we just each went his own way. And at some point we realized, okay, we, we are pretty bored with what we do today. We kept thinking uh, that we want to do something uh, special, right? Uh, something different. So we started looking at different areas until we learned about the world of connected cars. Cars are way more computerized than we realize. You have dozens of different computers in each vehicle. Almost everything you can imagine is somehow controlled by a computer. In the recent years, it became almost a trend to connect vehicles to the internet. And once you take such a complicated machine that has so much software in it and so many computers and you connect it to the internet, you have a serious problem. How do you start your day? What kind of questions are you asking each other when it comes to your industry, of course? So, you know, the first steps, uh, we took our own cars and we tried to, to hack them. And it was fun, it was nice, and then we really understood, look, this is possible. We need to do something about it. It's going to be a massive global problem. And I think that the risk is, is enormous. So how do you guys know how to do all this stuff? The three of us served together in the military in Unit 8200. In the 8200 unit. We have served for six years together in the 8200 intelligence unit. Unit H200 is the backbone of the Israeli intelligence community, and it's also a hotbed for Israeli high-tech. In recent years, when the name of the game is cyber, offensive cyber, defensive cyber, Unit A200 is there among the top four or five leaders in the world. The exact comparison is to US NSA to British General Communication Headquarters. Hello. I would say that the harsh reality of the region and the neighborhood where Israel lives is the driving force behind the intelligence community to develop the best technological skills in, in order to have the edge over the enemies. Most of the Unit A200 employees, workers, are conscripts, and the mandatory age in Israel for national service is 18. So we are talking about 18, 19 young boys, if you wish. And girls. And girls, yes, they have also girls. You have very young people, young teenagers, who have already homemade, homegrown skills to be hackers, to penetrate computers, to intercept information. Yeah, definitely uh, stick me over, uh, pick me over email, and then right, you know, I'll, maybe we can. I'll get back. Perfect. Great, great. Appreciate All right, it. thanks. Thank So what we present here is the Argus Connectivity Protection Modules. This is essentially protecting the infotainment and telematic systems inside the car. We can see that about 10 minutes ago there was some malicious activity there. So the Argus Connectivity Protection gives a solution to things misbehaving inside the car. So this is something that we would be able to detect. This is a simulation of a car. Okay. Let's imagine that you are a driver and you received some link and you clicked on that link. Okay. And you reached to a website which happened to be a malicious website. Okay. And now there is a hacker inside your head unit. So everything's at risk. Your all colors are now infected. 
I'm excited to be here at CS. It's, it's amazing here in the big league. We are working here with Intel, with Qualcomm, one of the biggest communication companies in the world. They chose to put our product inside the Maserati. What we're going to demonstrate is a cyber attack against the system. Okay, so now I'm installing the virus here, and now things are going to start getting crazy here in the cars. It's actively playing around with the various systems of the car, playing with the speedometer, with the RPM, the torque, door locks, windows. Additionally, it can affect the steering wheel, so if I have an electric steering, it can move the steering wheel to all sides, it can affect the driving. question is what happens on those other peaks? Most of our staff are graduates of the 8200 unit. They do what is called penetration testing. What it means is that we take a car and we try to hack it. And we do that in order uh, to find the vulnerable spots so we can help fix it. There is no script of how to hack a car. There is no straightforward way of how to do it. And you need to somehow figure out a way, even though the manufacturer did not intend for this to be possible. We take the radio and we break it apart and we see how it's working, right? How the different pieces um, communicate with each other. We found that it was communicating with its server in a way that is not secure. And so we were able to impersonate the server. And by that, we were able really to inject commands to the vehicle so that we were able, for example, to unlock the doors of the car or shut down the engine of the car. Things like that remotely through the cellular uh, connection. I am Ernest Gash in Erez. Okay. So, Moria Kubastov. Ami is managing a team of researchers. So, on a daily basis, basically, Ami's team is really putting on the hacker hat and trying to do those things to those cars. And those guys, they will figure out a way. Oron is leading the effort of developing the solutions, protecting the cars and the fleets, making it much more difficult for the attackers to hack into cars. We have the best attackers and the best defenders, and really what makes the best defenders the best is because they know how attackers think. And because we have this mix in the company, we can continuously improve the solutions that we provide. <laughs> It's no secret that cybersecurity is a major aspect in the intelligence core in the military. And when we started Argus, uh, we realized that our experience and know-how in cybersecurity is something important and something that we can use to uh, build something great. The Stuxnet virus, the idea was invented or initiated in the Israeli intelligence. And teams of the two countries, of NSA in the US and Unit 8200, started working to develop the code. The idea was to penetrate Iranian nuclear sites, gather information on what's going on there, and thirdly, once we know what's going on there, how can we damage it, slow it down, disrupt the operation? The only way to penetrate Natanz was by creating a virus, but such a virus that would be so sophisticated that it would damage the centrifuges, producing the enriched uranium, but it would damage it in such a way that the operators, the Iranians' operators, would not notice that something went wrong. The Stuxnet virus was a success in the sense that 
one third of the centrifuges at the time means 1,000 centrifuges were damaged, were not producing the enriched uranium as it was programmed, and the Iranians didn't notice and didn't know what was the problem. They became very, very desperate. The idea of Stuxnet was not just to damage the machines. The idea was, uh, had also a psychological purpose to make the Iranian engineers, technicians, computer uh, uh, experts, to, to make them feel that they are stupid, that there is a problem, that the machines are not working properly and they cannot figure out what is the problem. In September 2007, when the Israeli government decided to destroy the Syrian nuclear reactor, they used the skills of Unit 8200, which blinded the Syrian radars, so they seemed to be operational to their operators. That the system is working, but practically it was blind. It saw nothing enabling the Israeli Air Force to carry out the, the, and launch the missiles and destroy the, the reactor. I think that the experience that we have as hackers, many, many years of hacking different systems, is vital to this industry. I think this is what makes us unique and, and maybe also important in, that, in the same manner. My name is Amos Shalev. But everybody calls me Ami. In Argus, my main job is to hack cars. It's to understand the whole system and later on to protect it. I can shut down the motor, whatever I want. When you're driving, let's say, in the highway, I can cancel your brakes, I can make the car turn. If one would like to do a lot of harm, terrorism or murder someone, yeah, it could definitely be done by, by controlling his car, knowing where he is, when he's doing what he's doing, and to manipulate the car. It's not to be smarter than the one who designed it is just to show that you are capable of getting into his mind or design and to break it. But it doesn't have to do only with technology. It could be whatever. It could be also music. I think everything for me starts with music. I started to learn piano when I was six. At one stage, I started to research what I can do that's not on, on the notes. And since then, all my life, I'm always trying to find what's going to be the next new music. And writing in the logic of computers can be very similar to art and also for some sort of music. The similarity of music to mathematical features, into logical features, like loops. When you're improvising all the time, it's some sort of research because everybody's taking their melodies and ideas and bringing them to the band. In the world that going to have around 400 million cars connected and sharing information via the internet with, with nowadays technology, it can definitely be a hacker dream. Autos trucks are the next area of transportation innovation. And then once you're on the interstate, one switch and it's driving itself down the road.
the problem is imminent right now. It's going to take time until 200 million cars speak to each other. But the first thing that we have to do is create cars um, that, on the one hand, can become connected cars. In the future, autonomous connected cars. And so I believe the problem is something that we have to deal with immediately. We cannot wait for 10 years when 200 million cars are connected. Because if we're going to start getting hacks right now, that future that you're talking about is just not going to happen. We're talking about an era where cyber offense is taking a large toll on our economy. Cyber criminals, hacktivists, cyber terrorism. just have to look at the sheer numbers. I mean, uh, estimates are that 2015, we're at around half a trillion dollars of damage in cybersecurity. Estimations are that by 2020, that number is going to quadruple. Hackers are gaining access to the vehicle itself. A lot of our industries today are getting more digital, more connected. They are all about data and trust. And if you don't have data and trust, uh, you're losing a great part of the economy. And so when you put these two things together uh, and you look at the trajectory of getting more connected, more digital, then obviously uh, um, cybersecurity becomes paramount. And many companies are trying to do it, including us and Team 8. We try to build the most innovative, efficient, and effective companies in cybersecurity today. We work with Cisco, Microsoft, and with AT&T, and with Temasek. The 8200 brand is really catching on around the world. Everybody knows those 8200 guys. It's like almost saying those guys that came from MIT or those guys who came from Stanford. Mm -hmm. Do you think that 8200 philosophy, which you were very much involved in building, is going to revolutionize how people look at maybe training, education in these fields? I believe so. We get them at a very young age, but we get them for a very short time. And so if you're going to train them for five, six, seven years like universities do, then it's worthless. The philosophy around the 8200 education system is just more adaptive. It's much faster. In many ways, naivete becomes your friend and inexperience becomes an asset. Ultimately, every once in a while, they come up with a magical solution to an unsolvable problem. And in that instance, you know that you've got uh, an advantage that's going to stay with you for an unknown amount of time. Can you give us uh, a case in point? You've got three companies running. From which viewpoint are these three companies running to combat cybersecurity? With elusive networks, what we do is look at the network, not from the IT's perspective, but from the attacker's perspective. hardest thing, honestly, when you attack a large network is not penetrating it, but rather the orientation and propagation once you're inside the network. And we said, if it's about the people behind the malware and not the malware, what if we can disrupt the decision-making processes of the people behind the malware? What if we can fool them so that rather than passively waiting for them to do something, we'll actually lure them into making the mistakes?
this conference, we are trying to achieve two things. One is to maintain our position as a market leader, essentially. And the second thing, we have announced a new product uh, uh, called uh, Fingerprinting, which essentially is a completely new technology for us. And uh, we think it's going to revolutionize the world of automotive cybersecurity. So just as an example, we'll show first a potential attack. We have here a setup of uh, an instrument cluster. I will send it to Infineon because we are using a chipset of Infineon. And instead of a yellow spike, there will be a red spike, you see? It means that all the attacks were blocked. Fingerprinting, which essentially is able really to, to identify each computer in the car and, and it's completely a, a, a new concept of protection in, in automotive, so we're quite excited about it as well. Have you announced it already? Yeah, it was announced yesterday morning. And what was the reaction you're getting? Super, super, super positive. I'm very happy to be here. I'm very happy to be here. האחרונות אני חושב שהיו מאוד מאוד חיוביות. כן, גם לקבל פידבק מהשוק, גם לראות קצת מה המתחרים שלנו עושים. הרבה לקוחות, שותפים היו פה. איזה פידבקים קיבלת על המוצר שלך? אני חושב שזה הדבר הכי הכי מרגש שם מבחינת הפידבקים, היה איך שמסתכלים על האינוביישן, על זה שאנחנו יודעים להביא פתרונות חדשים לחלוטין לשוק. אנשים מופתעים איך אנחנו בכלל מסוגלים לעשות את זה. תשמע, זו בעיה שכולם צריכים לפתור. כולם צריכים לזהות. היה שיהיה עוד הרבה עבודה בשנים הבאות, אה? הולך להיות מעניין. What about next steps for Argus? Our next steps will be to bring our technology leadership into production. To have our systems installed by 2018 on different cars globally. That's definitely a great asset because we are facing really some difficulties in finding skilled people. Israel is a good part of potential cybersecurity experts, yeah. which in Italy is not so easy to find. During the negotiations between Iran and the world powers, Iranian delegations were staying in hotels. Unit 8200 managed to infiltrate the hotels that were staying. The hotels were bugged, the hotels were penetrated and infiltrated with malware and viruses, which not only tried to listen to telephone conversations and to, to dig information from computers, but also to penetrate security cameras, and if needed, even to change what the security cameras were showing or were seeing. If there is an assassination mission carried out by the Mossad, and they want to rig the security cameras, nowadays you can do it from a room in Tel Aviv to penetrate the security cameras or to break into doors with all these digital codes on hotel keys. You can do it from 1,000 or 2,000 or 3,000 kilometers away. That's what Unit 8200 is doing all the time, around the clock, and especially it's much more busy and intense when the Israeli military is carrying out operations. These conscripts come from a very solid and good background because at high school they are good students, but also because, because they already practice and experience the skills needed for Unit A200 by being hackers, for example. You're 18-year-old, you're 19-year-old. They were mostly interested in girls and boys and parties and fashion and music and movies, not being uh, an intel officer. So how do you assess who is relevant for those types of positions? And it's all based on how do you cope with not knowing. When you're stuck, what do you do? Okay. So for a college graduate from MIT or Stanford, they will dive into materials and learn for a long period of time, for a few weeks or months, everything they need to learn. For an 80 to 100 grad, the process would look differently. And actually getting stuck in a way and not knowing answers is a major part 
of the modus operandum because you actually constantly don't know what you're about to solve or to achieve and how to achieve that. To go to Tel Aviv. Is it the government or the government? The government. The government. I'm happy to say that we are going to be a company in the United States of Business Insider and we are going to be a company in the United States of Business Insider and we are going to be a company 38 חברות המחירים מבטיחות שעשו בום ב-2017. I spent almost five years in AD200, from training till managing and leading the officer school. ובסוף את 2016 גומרים? גומרים טוב. Sixgill is a company that we co-founded about three years ago, focusing specifically on the dark web activity. The dark web is the hidden part of the internet where information is shared in an encrypt and anonymous way. This enables criminal activity in the dark web of different sorts. One of the main criminal activities we see there is against financial institutions. And that's where our business is actually focusing on identifying threats to financial institutions before they even occur. You are a part of a program that tries to foster startup growth by potential candidates. And what's the ultimate goal? So I just joined as co-CEO of True Synthesis, a US-based company. And what we're trying to do is actually to help you if you're an investor, private equity firm, a board of director, select the top talent to join your executive team or even to lead as CEO of the company. We believe that there should be a new approach, a more developed approach towards hiring people, placing people, working and developing people. The philosophy we're using, the model we're using, is based on my experience in 8200. The capability of acquiring knowledge is part of the secret sauce. The capability of not being um, paralyzed by, by not knowing something, that's part of the skill set. And then whatever we need to learn, we'll do that very rapidly. I know this is the moment that everyone's been waiting for. Uh, I am pleased to introduce my colleague, uh, Inval Ariely, to announce the winners. She's been featured as one of the 100 most influential people in Israeli tech, as well as one of the top 100 uh, business tech women speakers in the world, Nifal Ariely. There's a lot of similarities between hiring in the corporate world, in the business world, and the methodologies that exist in 8200. And the winner of the 20 16 Digital Health IL Conference is ADOC. They shouldn't be looking only at the CVs because the CVs are dimensional. They, they show only one layer. They should challenge the person. They should see how that person is actually facing things they don't know. I founded seven years ago, on behalf of the 8200 Alumni Association, Israel's first accelerator. The 8200 Entrepreneurship and Innovation Support Program is aimed on fostering and nurturing first-time entrepreneurs and actually increasing their chances for success. Bringing together the 8200 network, philosophy, and if you want, DNA. Vision, think big. Oriya, did you get all this? I'm And the screening process that we do in our accelerator, I think, looks completely different from other accelerators in Israel and around the world. We're not necessarily focused on the product, the idea. We're much more focused on the persona, 
on the team, the founding team, how they work together. We're screening all the applications that we got, hundreds of applications. At the end of the process, we should have only 20 participants uh, that will be admitted to the 2017 cycle. Cyber insurance. And all this is for free, right? I mean, that's important. Yes. We feel that as 8200 alums, we were privileged. Serving in this military unit has given us so much to who we, we grew up to be, okay? Um, not everyone was that privileged, um, and we want to give back. And we want to give back by doing what we know how to do best. I'm inspector from Steps and the team is with Ori. Ori is there. So one of the most interesting companies I met in social program at the speed dating was a company that was actually founded by a stutter, someone with uh, you know speech impairments. He just found a solution to a problem that a lot of people have and it makes them feel embarrassed, makes them feel ashamed. And he came to this program to build an app that will help thousands or millions of people with speech impairments. <laughs> The best thing I can help those startups is, is teach them how to fail. Teach them how to fail fast. Let's say you have funding for 12 months. If you create a lot of small experiments that each of them takes a month or a month and a half, then you have enough time and money for 10 experiments. Fail fast, they'll try more things. Eventually, you'll tweak it enough and hopefully you'll be a success. No, but it doesn't mean that it went down. It is also somewhere here. Next one. The mouse here is terrible. I started a company that did uh, software development at the age of 15. What we created was the software that helped soldiers in the field to look where they are on the map and send commands. That was between 15 to 18. Great three years. Then I actually started making money. It was the first time in my life that I felt like, okay, I can help my family because my, my parents are divorced, my mom is a single parent. I felt a little bit, uh, I would say, uh, a discomfort because I'm making more than my mom and dad. And I'm just 16 and I'm making five figures. So I spent five years in 8200, amazing five years. I would say that even now, 10 years after I was discharged, that was still the most challenging time, the most rewarding time when you get to solve really tough problems and, and you really feel you're saving lives. There's no room for failure because you know that if you'll fail, bad things will happen. Bad things will happen in Israel. Bad things might happen in your city. And I used to tell 8,200 prospects, did you know that we stopped two bombings in Kfar Saba this week? You don't. Why not? Because 8,200 is here. One of the commanders of uh, 8,200, 
he used to quote this philosopher that said, what's hard, we do quite easily. The impossible takes a little bit more time. So, and, and that is basically, you know, what drives 8200. You guys do have access to the C panel which basically can give you access to the file server. After five yeah, years in 8200, first of all, you think that there's no other challenge in the world that would be as great as the challenge that you just witnessed. Uh, and by the way, that is true. If you click these, you can like install WordPress. What did 8200 give you to create the companies that you created and to move ahead? The year was 2008. For the first time, I was out there trying to be a founder of something. I teamed up with three other friends. At least two of them were 8200 alumni. And we started our own company that did social games on Facebook as a platform. Do you have two-factor authentication for anything? For some things. Like your email? Like, yeah, Iron Source made us otherwise. I think it was two years it took us to understand that while we have tons of users, we're not making any money, and we have no idea what we're doing. That was the first failure in a, in a series of failures to come. I think that being a serial entrepreneur is actually being a serial failure. Basically, you try and you try and you try, and you just hope that one of those things will actually work. And uh, we started a company that was called The Jillion. Uh, that company was an advertising technology company. And it really quickly, it became a successful company. We raised $75 million and took the company public for uh, $250 million. A lot of people used to ask me, I never thought you knew how to take a company public. And I would say, yeah, me too. But you know, they told us that this is what they want to do. So we've learned and we did it. Hey. Hey. I met Ran Goldi just before high school. A few years later, we met again at the army. We were together at the 8200 unit. This is mid market. This is market Oh, nice. He is very hands-on, and he was really good at knowing everybody in the unit and how to move projects through people, how to move people into projects. I always took the research, the hacker, the, the thinker, how to break into everything. No. Ami is managing a team of researchers. We take a car and we try to hack it. And we do that in order to find the vulnerable spots so we can help fix it. ECU fingerprinting is something that we are very excited about. You have different uh, systems inside the vehicle and they communicate with each other. The communication infrastructure in the vehicle is built in such a way that you cannot tell which system sent a specific message to the other system. And this allows the attacker to potentially inject messages, and it may tell the brakes to engage even though they shouldn't. So we've developed the technology to pinpoint exactly which system in the car sent each message. And we do that by uh, physically fingerprinting the different components in the car. Because we can do that, an attacker is not able to impersonate systems in the car anymore because it relies on the physical characteristics of the different systems. This approach is potentially much more cost effective and, uh, uh, and this is generating a lot of interest from our clients, for sure. Imagine you drive a car, you click some link, which appear to be malicious. And when that happens, a virus has intruded the system and the car has been hacked. So what I'll do now is start the active prevention here at Argus 
And what we can notice is that suddenly nothing is happening in the car, everything is quiet, the windows are no longer opening and closing, the doors are not unlocking and locking, and I can drive safely back home. That's something we are going to look because we are interested in expanding our, our solutions. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, we have a sales of about $35 billion with more than 310 manufacturing locations with employing about 150,000 people across the world. The one distinguishing factor uh, with Argus, it actually can monitor the activity of the data and when it senses something that is not normal, it's able to take whatever action is needed to prevent any illegal activity happening. That's why we partnered with them and we see this partnership uh, to be very uh, useful and very impactful in the industry going forward. The fact that they believe in Argus, it's a huge confidence by such a company in a small startup from Israel, and to have them installing us on their hardware and bring us into the vehicles, it's phenomenal. We have another demo with Freescale and XP. It's one of the biggest chip manufacturers for the automotive industry. No doubt that a lot of what we are doing here is due to what we have done in the background from the 8200 intelligence. It's, Very impressive. Uh, it's a long process. Yeah, very good. Excellent. Very good okay. demo. <laughs> Thank you. I think that the market would not perceive us as experts in cybersecurity without that background. The 8200 is essentially a brand of confidence in, in cyber capabilities globally. Right? It's, it's well known, it comes up in, in many customer meetings. What's the future? The future is to be installed, hopefully, in every single new vehicle five years down the line. That's what we are hoping, that we are working so hard to. We hope to do it. 20 years ago, hackers were considered to be criminals. Later on, at least the recruiters of Unit A200 realized that there is a potential in them. They don't treat them anymore as criminals, but as genius. 8200, they teach you how to be an entrepreneur without even telling you that that's what they're doing. No, you don't have 30 developers. You have you and you and you and this guy. I just have to do it. There's no other option but succeeding in the mission. The brightest people in Israel are being concentrated into few rooms in order to solve the most complicated problems probably in the world. And I think that's created the right DNA for companies like Argus to succeed in the world. <laughs>